Good morning. Today I will describe Horus, uh, which is a granular test scheduler that runs uh, uh, in the network for data centers. Uh, data, centers data centers today host a, a wide variety uh, of um, uh, latency sensitive applications uh, where basically we, we are observing the rise of what we call uh, the granular computing where applications are basically composed into uh, thousands of uh, short-lived tasks and usually in orders of tens of microseconds to hundreds of microseconds and they run on in parallel uh, over these uh, thousands or even tens of thousands of workers. And there are many examples actually to show like these, representing these uh, granular computing paradigm. Uh, things like key value stores, web search engines, RPCs, and, and so on. And one of the main components uh, for running the whole thing is, is the test scheduler. So specifically, uh, we have multiple applications, like granular applications, that they are composed into short-lived tasks that they can run in, in parallel. And each application basically is assigned a specific worker, a set of workers, like in, in what we call a worker pool in the whole data center. So the, the tasks basically being submitted to the task scheduler, and then the task scheduler selects uh, the workers, which could be a bunch of cores or any other resources. And there are many objectives for, for such granular task schedulers at scale. Uh, first, it needs to maintain a very high throughput, scheduling throughput, as well as uh, low scheduling latency. And to highlight why this is very challenging, assume that we have a task that's coming to the scheduler. Uh, and if it sees a lot of uh, uh, tasks in front of, of that, uh, the incoming task, it will take a lot of time. Uh, for example, since this is a short-lived, like these are short-lived tasks, we, we uh, workers basically will uh, run at, uh, like in the order of tens, uh, thousands of tasks per second. So this means that the scheduler will need to actually do uh, ten, tens of millions of decisions per second, which put a lot of load on the scheduler. Uh, and more importantly, the tail response time. So the objective here is to minimize the tail response time. Similarly, if a task arrives to a CPU and it again sees a lot of workers in front of it, it will just take a lot of time to, to, to reply the response back to the client, uh, which will increase the tail response time. Uh, finally, since we are working at uh, the data center scale, we also would like to minimize the scheduling overheads uh, since the schedulers would need to maintain a fresh view of all the workers in, in the network. So our approach basically is to, uh, to make the network act as the scheduler. So instead of applications submitted their tasks to a centralized scheduler, they actually would submit it to uh, uh, the distributed switches in the network. And we take, advantages, uh, take advantage of programmable switches that inherently can run ta uh, packets at, uh, at very high throughput with uh, relatively low latency. However, the key challenge in, in this approach is how we design an efficient scheduling policy that run totally in the data plane. And this system is, is HORS. Uh, before getting into HORS, so I'll give a few like, examples on the current schedulers. So uh, the f first uh, type of schedulers were basically they maintain some queues of tasks uh, and they basically uh, queue them and then wait for, they probe the workers and then they wait for a reply back from the workers. Again, this actually uh, takes a lot of time. Although these systems are, can be distributed run at, at the data center, but they maintain queues and they take a lot of time. Other systems that try to use network, like they are network assisted, basically, they still need some interaction between the server and, and the queues on the switches. Uh, that's why we are calling them here network assisted. And the other like work that is kind of the state of the art for in network task scheduling is RacksKit, where basically uh, it's centralized but running at only at the rack level. Uh, and uh, but does not require queue. Unlike all of these systems, we design HORS to be distributed running at the data center scale and does not require any queues at the switches. 
So this gets us into the design principles of Horse. First, we eliminate the task queues overall at, at the schedulers so that we can make scheduling at line rate with minimum latency. We also design our schedulers to be distributed. And this would reduce the, the state of the load on the switches by up to three orders of magnitude, at least in, 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 in the, topologies that we, the topologies that we considered. Because now the load basically is divided across all of the, the workers, uh, sorry, across all the schedulers uh, in, in the network. To give an overview of Horus, so the Horus starts with an application sending the tasks or packets to uh, r r randomly selected spine switches, which act as a spine scheduler, and the spine scheduler will select a rack uh, to that task based on the load, uh, the average load uh, of the workers belonging to, to that uh, uh, rack, sw uh, rack switch, top of rack switch, and then the leaf scheduler will do the same recursively, will it basically select a worker for, for that task, and when, when the work is done on the worker, uh, the packet is basically, uh, we attach like the current load of the worker to, to the reply, reply packet, and then we distribute the load information to all involved switches in, in the network. And then in, in the top, there is the Horus controller that handles system dynamics. So Horus basically addresses two sub-problems jointly. The first one is the from north to south direction, which is basically scheduling the tasks, and then from the south to north direction, which basically distributed the worker loads in the network. So the scheduling policy in, in Horus basically has, we, we designed two small uh, data structures. So the first one is called the idle uh, list, which basically maintain the IDs of the idle nodes. Uh, and again, designing this in the, in, the, in the network has some challenges that we addressed in the paper by basically maintaining some invariant of basically whether this node is idle or not, so that we make sure that the access is very quick while actually we make sure that they are actually uh, idle. Uh, and uh, we actually have more details in the paper describing how, how this works. Uh, and the second decision that we make, if, if now the nodes are not idle, if they are busy, or some of, we are, sorry, the scheduler is not aware of any idle node, it is aware only of busy nodes. So we perf Horus performs power of two choices and picks the two, uh, like the node with minimum load. Uh, as such, so for in this example, the spine switch is aware of multiple loads uh, on, uh, for the, the leaf switches, uh, and then it pick one of them, because again, it applies power of two choices, and recursively also the leaf switch does the same thing. Uh, and now we'll get into some details on, on the scheduling to the busy nodes. So, uh, and, and basically, in uh, uh, packet processing pipelines, they are, again, they run in stages in, in a pipeline. So you can have a lot of packets actually concurrently exercising different stages in the network. And we have a task coming in into the pipeline as, as a packet. And the first thing, it, it reads a value from the load uh, memory, right, from the load list. And yeah, it knows like some uh, load information. But uh, the first challenge is that we can only have single access to each register array in, in any stage. So to, to address this challenge, we, we replicate the, the load register array across two stages. So ba basically, when the task go to the next stage, it, it, no, it now can access another uh, uh, load value. Then in the next stage, we, we basically pick the least uh, loaded node from both of them. Uh, but the, the second challenge now is after we pick the node with the minimum load, so we cannot register, since registers are bound to a specific stage at the compile time, we, we cannot actually go back and, and update the, the load list. Uh, and this is again to maintain a very high speed uh, proce packet processing pipelines. Uh, and again, the straw person solution is just to resubmit all the, the tasks, which unfortunately put a lot of uh, uh, load on, the, uh, on the, the, these incoming links, which, which is not good for, for scalability. Our approach is basically to, to resubmit tasks only and if only the load updates are, are needed. Uh, and to, to do, implement this idea, we basically uh, maintain another uh, sets of, of registers. We refer to them as the drift, 
which is the difference between the actual load and the maintained load uh, at the switch. So, and uh, when the task arrives at stage number four in this example, uh, we, we make a, a decision uh, based on this sufficient condition that we derived also in the paper, where the, the drift of the minimum, uh, the drift of the uh, least loaded node, if it's larger than this value, the, the load of the other no, node minus the minimum loads that we chose, then we may have the problem or the issue that the other node that we did not choose actually could be le le less loaded than the one that we chose because we don't now maintain the actual loads in the first two stages. And now, only now we can actually resubmit the packets uh, or the tasks to, uh, uh, to the first stage so that we can update the load uh, register arrays and actually do the decisions uh, based on this fresh view of, of the network. And this can re uh, significantly reduce the resubmission rates compared to, to the other systems. Uh, also, in, 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 in the paper, we, we talk about how we can distribute the state uh, or the load information from the workers to the leaf switches to the spine switches. Uh, and again, like the, the, the challenge here is that like for any change, we cannot really just distribute the, the, the state for all switches because this will take a lot of processing overheads, a lot of bandwidth in the network. Instead, we, we propose uh, what we call the aggregated state updates at each switch, where we basically say, okay, we aggregate these states together or loads together, and once uh, the switches uh, decide that now the time to actually send these uh, uh, states or loads to, to the upper layer switches, it will do so. <clears throat> uh, we evaluated Horus. Sorry. In, in two setups, the first one is in a test bed and the other one is in large scale simulations. So we implemented uh, horror schedulers in, in the, in totally, uh, fully in the data plane uh, uh, using, in, in P4 using in, Intel to finish switch. Uh, we also implemented the, uh, the Horus agents on top of a modified version of Shinjuku and we used uh, a ROX database, a ROX DB, sorry, applications as, as the representative set of like short-lived tasks where basically uh, we have a mix of scan and get tasks with different ser service times. Uh, we compared our system against the state of the art, uh, which is RAXKID, but unfortunately RAXKID does not work at like across the data center. It works only at a direct level. So we actually extended RAXKID to support different layers or diff like a hierarchy uh, in, in, in the network in two variations. So the first one is load balancing, where basically the upper layer is kind of oblivious. It just load balance the traffic across the top of rack switches, and then the top of rack switch will make the rack skid decision. And the other piece is basically we re-implemented the rack skid to, to be recursive or hierarchic, to do things in a hierarchy where again it will basically do the RAXKIT stuff in the, in the spine switch and the RAXKIT stuff in, in the top of RAX switch and, and so on. So the first set of results is the tail response time in the y-axis versus the, the load. Uh, and we can see here that the load balancing actually scheme is, does not scale well even uh, for uh, minimum lo uh, small load values. Uh, and for Horus, uh, compared to the hierarchical implementation of the RAXKID, it actually can reduce the, uh, the tail response time up to 80, 85%. Uh, uh, and uh, for specific SLO requirements, it can increase the task uh, throughput uh, by up to, uh, sorry, by more than two times uh, compared to uh, the hierarchical implementation of RAXKID. Uh, we also re reported like multiple overheads. Uh, the first one is the fraction of tasks that are being resubmitted uh, co uh, compared to systems that just resubmit every task in, in the network, which again takes up a lot of resources. And this is based on our idea of lazy updates in the network. Uh, so we can here see that actually Horus reduces this number of resubmission tasks very si significantly compared to the other systems. Uh, and com compared to other like schedulers that require one message per task, 
uh, in, the, in the control plane of things, we aggregate the updates in Horus, so we can also reduce uh, uh, these number of updates significantly in the network compared to the other systems. We also simulated uh, uh, Horus in a, in a very large scale data center network with like almost 30,000 hosts, uh, where we also varied the number of workers per pool to f from 50 to 20,000, so that we can have a diverse uh, representation of, of multiple data center networks. We also simulated different service distribution times that we believe they are representative to different workloads like exponential, bimodal, and trimodal uh, service times. And then we plotted also the, the tail response time versus the load uh, in the x-axis. And uh, maybe as expected and similar, similar trend to, to the testbed implement, uh, implementation, we can see that the load balancing actually does not scale very well. And we, in the paper, we actually experimented with different setups with heterogeneity of the, the setup, homogeneity of the setup, and, and so on. And we can here observe that uh, also Horus can achieve reduction in the response time up to, tail response time up to 70% per, per while increase the throughput uh, by at least five, uh, by up to five times. So in summary, Horus is the first distributed uh, in-network granular task scheduler that runs at the scale of the data center, that runs all of its scheduling decisions in the network. Uh, we designed a new scheduling policy that minimizes the tail response time. Uh, and to do so, we actually proposed uh, various ideas and data structures that, again, run uh, fully in the in, inside the network to, to realize Horus in the data plane. Our results also show significant reduction in response time and a reduction in all of other uh, considered overheads. Uh, we also published our source code and several of our data sets. Uh, hopefully you can try it out. Thank you.